Hello beautiful people, this will be a very long video and very hard edited, so if you have any questions before typing them in the comment section below, please check out the description for the timestamps. I leave it all for you because I understand perfectly you don't want to watch the whole video and you just want a specific answer, so that's why there's timestamps in this video for this full barter guide imajiggy that I'm hard working right now. So this is going to be my quick explanation of bartering, but I am going to go full detailed after this quick explanation so stick around or just click as i mentioned before the description and go to a part that you want so quickly describing bartering it's a new life skill it's the most hardest one to level uh, the leveling mastery does not matter it's uh, zero you don't need to say it's bugged uh, the way you make money from bartering is basically trading or selling the tier 5 materials sometimes you get tier 5 materials that cost 10 mil you go to the ocean, you trade these three, so technically that is 30 mil. It's a little bit, it could be a little bit confusing at the very, very beginning, but don't worry about it. The easiest way to explain, it's basically taking materials that didn't have uh, pretty much value, like uh, this rough blue crystal, and you trade it into a level one item. You move on from level one item, which is the white gear, let's say from this boat that you get to a green one, from a green one, aka the level 2, to level 3, level 4, level 5, this is the orange one. And if you want, you can exchange them for C coin. And with C coins, you can buy yourself like uh, Karak gear or Manos accessories. You can see which ones do you need in the Furia, like uh, the rest of the boat gear. As you can see, these are the Galise, these are the Caravel. I guess the end goal and the end game for some people, or at least for me, the reason why I went bartering is because of this beautiful boat right here. It's beautiful, it's big, and it's not like you can, you cannot pay to win this boat. You, you, what I'm trying to say is, this is a very beautiful boat that you can't. You gotta earn this. You gotta work your bottom off. It's beautiful, and uh, this is the reason why I went for it. It took me a long time, like almost three months of uh, just basically pure grind every single day dailies. But yeah, my personal, if you want the money per hour, for me, it's like 60 mil to 150 mil an hour. And also sometimes I can get more like 200 mil, but it also depends on your boat setup, your RNG on rolls, your C coin trade ups. And uh, now that they're nerfing and buffing some of the things and changing all these things, it might change. This is how it is now, and um, yeah, hopefully this video will make it clear. Um, if I did not mention something in the video, I apologize. It's been long three days, and I, hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did, well, write it down in the comment section below, and I, or one of my people, <laughs> one of my people, one of my subscribers will help you answer, because I have a lovely community that... Um, are also as passionate as me about this game so thank you all and enjoy the video so let's begin what ship to use for bartering simple answer would be the more weight the better sailboat will have more weight sailboat originally has 5000 weight base and frigate will deal more damage and will be faster and frigate only has 4000 weight oh can i barter with bardarly sailboat yeah you can with 2000 weight you can do trade-ups like you would like to get more because it's not enough weight to do the proper bartering. I'll give you an example before we move on. So you can actually trade all six tier one materials from the island, which means you don't have to go for that one extra every single time because with the frigate, you only have 4,000 weight. So you can only get five items just because tier one materials are 800 weight each. And that's how math works. Okay, I would like to mention that yes, you can actually buy yourself gear or craft yourself gear. I'm not going to get into how, but basically you can do this, right? This quest right here where this person is doing. And now where you go here, you exchange it for the designs and then you go to craft the Deneferia. And then 
choose and pick your weight material or whatever sail plating thing you want to do. This is where also you craft your Galise or Caravel gear as well. The reason why I don't really recommend buying or crafting yourself like this, I guess, yes, this gear is better on movement speed and uh, it is slightly better on some things. So yeah, that's why I don't recommend it, just because you're going to go for these, uh, for the green gear, so might as well just stick with them because they're going to have extra weight, which is going to be very useful. And it's going to be a little bit slower, but you don't need to change it at back and forth. At least that's my personal opinion. Speaking of tier 1 materials, they're a really good way to boost your bartering number. So please, on every single reset, if you're gonna go for barter numbers and pick you want them, you have to do the tier 1 materials. Yes, you will have a lot of them in your, uh, I don't know, Velia, Etheria, Ilia, whatever island you choose. You will have a lot of them, don't worry about it. That's how you do your barter count. Up. Speaking of bartering numbers, in front of you, you can see the needed amount. What they mean is, these are how you unlock the C-Coin trade-up barters, right? Okay, initially I did not make it clear what I meant on the barter routes uh, trade-ups. What I mean is the C-Coin trade-ups. Initially, like now I have 6,000 trade-ups, which is the 5,120 bracket that I mentioned that everybody should reach, or should I at least aim for. Uh, what I mean is, I'm talking about, see, the brilliant. That's why you want to unlock it. So the barter the brackets are counted by the how many C-Coin uh, trade-ups you can do. So I am at 10th route, 5,120. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is how many like trade-ups I can actually do currently, which is a lot. But that's what I mean when I like 10 trade-ups sequence. At 10,240, uh, I think that's the one, I will unlock another sequence trade-up. So that is what I mean, the sequence. Just wanted to be sure that you understood. The brilliant materials that you need really specifically for Karak. So if you have, if you need a goal, 5,120 is the goal. Before I get into quests, more into quests, uh, how to level bartering, it is basically spamming barters. That's it. You just trade up as much as you can and the level of the, let's say the tier one and the tier five trade up or the, this into C coins does not matter. So you just want to spam and the XP or the buffs that you have, the life skill book, the seafood cron meal, the, um, the verdus or the draughts, everything works. Uh, if you want to level your bartering, which it doesn't really mean like a lot because the bartering just uh, reduces the parlay and I'm professional one, so it decreases 14% of each barter. So that means that one barter, let's say the tier one, um, so let's say the tier one uh, will cost me 10,852. It's not a big deal, but I guess it adds up a little bit over time, but it's just, it's not a big deal to level it. You'll get there eventually. And uh, by doing the tier one trade-ups, because you want to push the C-Coin barter uh, brackets, you're going to get uh, your leveling up pretty quick. I will sidetrack a little bit because quests is going to be a really important topic. I would recommend doing it just because the main quest is uh, the Great Expedition one. So to start out this quest, you need to press Black Spirit, press Vigorous Velia, go here, and it will say like, hey, go talk to Igor Bertawi. The reason why you want to do this quest is because you will get from beginner one, from zero to skilled one sailing in just one quest, which is beyond happy so yeah the reason why i mentioned that quest is because well first off it's super useful to have skilled one sailing it's gonna be like insta excel on your horsey in but on your ship another super important quest is on crow's nest this is a seven day daily quest where you go there every single day for seven days in a row talk to the lady in this unmarked um unmarked island it's like north of Velia, a little bit to the right. I show you in front of your screen. Basically, what you need to do is go there every single day for seven days in a row and um, just do what she has. Basically, go talk to Velia, go catch a fish. It's really random quests, but the rewards will save you like pretty much like 50% of the materials that you would need to craft for 
uh, Galice or Caravel. So it's definitely worth doing and it's, uh, it's a pretty easy daily quest that you can pretty much nail. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So the green gear to upgrade to Galice or Caravel you will buy from uh, Philaberto Falassi in uh, Portiferia. But to enhance it, you need the green verdant uh, black stones, or the green balls that I like to call them. And you cannot buy them from here, although these are the current things that you can buy with C coins. If you want to check them out, I guess, you can stop out of the video and boom. The reason why it's this is important is because right here, verdant black stones. These are the ones that you need. 220, exactly. You get them from sea monster hunting as well. You can kill... Uh, sea monsters and get them randomly. I have gotten them from Sea of Silence as well. The proper uh, the proper way is to to do the trade up. The seven day that I'm the quest that I mentioned in the crow's nest will give you a hundred of these green balls, which is huge. So it saves a lot of time. How to get the rest of them is by crow's merchant guild bard voucher thingies, majiggies. How to get them? You basically exchange them at uh, or with. Uh, level 1 trade goods that I mentioned before basically your regular old uh, tier 1 materials you trade these with a purple lady uh, next to the wharf I will show you in a second or I'll probably showing you now by the ed ed editing magic so move on so speaking of quests let's move on to the Okula eye quests which is going to be your daily grind if you're going to go for Karak. There are in total 10 or technically 11 or even more quests but I'm not going to get into the technicalities. I'm going to give you the first quests. So when you just jump off your ship into the Alkula Eye you're going to go to Wharf Guy and you're going to take the first quest which is going to be like hey you go barter five times. Then we move on a little bit to the left and get the three quests, which is going to be like, hey, go kill a stalker, go kill a Hecaru, and go kill two small um, sea monsters. Or before you go killing on those, don't forget to go to the Otter and uh, exchange Coral, or an Iridescent Coral, for the really important rewards for Sea Wet Stock and uh, Manganese, which is also going to be very useful in the future if you're going to go for Karak or Galice or for uh, blue gear upgrades. So now that we have those quests in, you go kill uh, Stalker, you go kill those two smaller ones, and then you go kill Hecaru. And then when you go back and take the rewards from the same guy, you will unlock six new quests, which is technically three new quests because you can only pick e either the uh, smaller one or the easy one or the hard one. So the difference between hard one and easy one, it's like 50% less materials or in Nine Shark uh, case, you will actually get one instead of three. So um, I would definitely recommend going for the hard one, harder ones. Basically killing the Black Rust, the Nine Shark, or Candinium. Or if you can't uh, kill it yourself, it's going to be a little bit like, let's say if you don't have the firepower or the knowledge how to kill them properly. I would then, I guess you can go for those smaller ones because you can do uh, those quests with your guildies, with a group of people. Also on your screen, I will relieve uh, uh, Iridescent Coral Rotation. Basically, I explore that island from head to toe. Maybe I miss some. And uh, but yeah, definitely do that if you're missing on the Iridescent Coral. While we're you know, on the topic of Iridescent Coral and Aya Okula Eye, I'll briefly mention the secret events, that is the chest event and the otter merchant uh, event, which is basically otter merchant spawns inside the water and you go talk to him and uh, there's RNG, I think there is 8 or 10 uh, different otters that can spawn on the island on different times. It's very confusing. I don't know why they made it so confusing. You go trade and you can trade your iridescent coral, uh, seaweed stock, and different kind of materials. Some of the otters are actually way better than the other ones. So do not get scammed. And another one, chest event, uh, is very important as well. Well, it's not very important, but you definitely want to participate and always have silver keys on you if you're going to be spending time on that island because the chest event actually gives you 
uh, a chance at lower uh, tier goods or higher tier goods, which is barter items, or sometimes on very rare occasions is uh, you're going to get golden materials which is going to save you a lot of time so so getting back finishing up the quests on the okula eye so we mentioned two otter quests the iridescent and coral one um the trade five barter items and then three stalker hecaru and two small ones and after you complete those it will unlock the black rust uh, nine shark and continuum and then when you go complete those and get yourself um Get yourself those final quests. Uh, you also can complete the five barter ones, which will unlock another extra bar uh, quest, which is going to be a little bit more to your left, and it will be like, hey, go barter ten times, and will will give you a nice material as well if you want. The reason why you want to do these quests, and um, there is a, actually a side reward, which is Akula coin. So the reason why you want those Akula coins is every 150 Akula coin, you have another quest, which is basically like, hey, exchange 150 of Akula coin into ship upgrade materials, which is going to save you a lot of time. And if you're going for Caravel, Karak, then you want seaweed stock. But if you're going for frigate, Karak upgrade then you would want the pirate or a pirate artifact I guess I just briefly mentioned but the reason why you want the seaweed or the artifacts instead of other materials because well when you're going for a Karak you need specific items aka the most important items which is going to be the blue gear the crafting it is um, in my case it was Galise so all these four pieces which is sail uh, cannon prow uh, prow and uh, plating so all of these require certain materials the rudy manganese you get from quests enhancing trees uh, and gross uh, and great ocean dark iron are from just uh, regular barter so we don't have to worry about them you eventually get them so the user by the name zero toxicity actually made this and i will link it down in the description down below so you can save it uh, here's your guide basically the main question was like oh which items do i save because i don't want to sell or trade and not have it when it did does pop up because in some certain situations let's say in my case the rock salt ingot was one of the more difficult ones and uh, let's say I only would have the conch shells and the balanced stone pagoda but I didn't wouldn't have the urchin spine and suddenly after days of waiting of it the RNG to pop up the rock salt actually pops up and it's bam I have to have the urchin spine on top of being lucky you actually need to be prepared so these are the materials just you know whatever you're going for i'm not gonna say like which items you need to keep it because well you're going for either the uh, advanced or balanced aka the caravel uh, upgrade or you're going for the valor volante the galise upgrade so this is going to save you a time again thank you very much zero toxicity for just being a nice human being so the reason why you want to do quests is because you're limited by the quests and the items that you get from these. So the seaweed stock, as you can see, I need 125 for this piece, right? And uh, another 125 for the sale. So in total, we need 250. One daily quest of um, a one daily quest gives four seaweed stock the advanced or balanced it's going to be much easier just because the seaweed stock is 125 and um, the sale is only 80 that's 51 days only seaweed and then you will need the cox artifact combats which is going to be 120 divide that by three because you get three daily so you only take that 40 days so the maximum amount of days that you need for uh, upgrading from caravel to karak advanced or balanced it will take you 51 days or 50 like 51 days like maximum if you would do your dailies every single day i just re-listened to what i said it's just hard to un to ask the newbie questions when you already know a lot of the part of the bartering so i apologize if it's not clear i'm trying my best to clarify again uh, I have both Caravel. I bought another sailboat for this purpose of this video, but the point that I'm trying to make is 
when you're crafting the Caravel upgrade to Karak Advanced or Karak Balanced, there's four Karaks by the way, If you, I guess I should have mentioned that as well. From Caravel you can go to Advanced and uh, Balanced, these are the stats if you're interested. Boom, it has a lot of weight which is beautiful, 16,000 weight, that would be wonderful but I'm not going for it. So the reason why I kind of lied I guess is because I was focused on the blue materials, on the blue parts, because this is the the hardest part to get. These, I would say, um, also, you kinda would want to go to at least one con uh, with your guild, or you can actually merc for another guild. So you just join a Discord, join, the, um, just be a little bit more social. This is an MMO, and maybe try to get into a guild or merc for someone. Just find some friends, basically. Because Moon, if you don't do con, at least one, Moonvine Flax Fabric might be also a bottleneck, but it's not a big deal. You get it also daily for doing the daily quests. So if you don't even succeed in getting into a con or, or murking for one or doing with your guild, don't worry about it. You will get it eventually. So there is like, you're, you're, you're not like totally screwed by not getting this. This, you pretty much get that. Also from pirates, uh, the random uh, little ships that appear uh, on top of you. These ones, the brilliant ones, these are the ones that I kind of lied, lied about because, well, you do need to reach 5,120 or spend 1,600 coins each. That's what I did to push my, just basically getting a Karag before the New Year's. Yeah, I would recommend slowly but surely pushing the tier 1 barters and just getting to 5,120 so you unlock the brilliance because you will need 70 of these. For a uh, Galise upgrade we only needed 60 but we do need more artifacts for the blue pieces. So it's like, you know, a, it's a balancing out like what do you want. Because after you reach 5,200, you just get these all the time. The maximum amount that I got, the brilliant ones, was uh, two, and uh, there was some opportunity. There is uh, there is a chance that it will not spawn. So this time, oh my goodness, not get sidetracked. But yeah, um, but yeah, as you can see, there is a chance, or I guess I didn't show you, but there is a chance that it's not gonna spawn the brilliant one. But you do want to reach 5,120, so you just uh, casually get them and save 1,600 coins. So the reason why I said the amount of maximum time, 51 days, is because if you do uh, regular trades with the C coins, you will get around um, 1,300 at like 9 uh, trade-ups. Also, a little tip about Ilya Island, it's... Uh, you can have 91 inventory slots, which is taking basically all the houses. There's two houses on the left. Some people don't know about this. Also, this getting a house right here in Lima Island will also give you three more spaces in Ilya. So these are the tips on Lima Island. And uh, yeah, also for grabbing all 12 of the trade trade routes, you can actually unlock one energy. So that's a that's a good tip and once you explore one you will always have a marker in the ocean so you don't need to get lost which compass to choose from i would personally recommend obviously the the market one because well it's silver it's easy to get and if there's all on, on the market you could just get them all the time the next option is going to be seven day compass from crow's nest so you exchange for 7 day compass for 400 coins. I did it a couple of times just because I'm lazy and I keep forgetting my compass. Or you can also get the most convenient one. <sighs> Sarcasm as well. The 50 pearl one for 2 hours. It's very useful when you're you don't when you have a 5 second memory. So one thing that I haven't mentioned is the anchor system which is probably the most obvious answer. And uh, honestly, I was already rendering the video, but I forgot about this part. So when you anchor, you do want to press explore because it could give you a quest, multiple different ones that will give you contribution XP, which is lovely, uh, as well as it can destroy your ship. Well, not really destroy your ship, but there could be a chance of a whale or a bear just mauling your ship. If you do have, let's say, 400,000 of durability, 
I wouldn't press this button because sometimes you can get unlucky. Honestly, supply button, it will restore your uh, rations. I honestly don't click ever this just because all you need to do is just buy some food off the market, uh, press P, refill it with uh, simple cron meals. That's going to be expensive choice, but just pick a just pick a meal and um, yeah. I personally use crown meals just because I don't have a lot of maids and uh, delivering a hundred crown meals at a time is very efficient because I only have one maid with me. So I don't need to carry that much weight on me. And then I just click, choose amount, boom, it's refilled. Cannonballs, you can uh, refill your cannonballs by buying these things, the wind, uh, origin of wind. Uh, you can craft them if you don't have all on your market. So let's explore. But yeah, you can get quests, you can get items, you can also get you can also get nothing, and you can also get barter support boxes. But it's getting changed, and we're gonna get something different. I think they're getting nerfed, but I can't tell yet. This is so far from what I know. How could I have forgotten this? This is literally like the most obvious question that people would ask. Oh, the simple things. I definitely. I if I miss something again, I apologize. Well, 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 this video took me a long time to make, so hopefully I answered at least 99.999% of your questions. If I still haven't answered something, thank you very much for watching. Now I'm gonna go and uh, render this video, create a thumbnail, put the description and the timestamps for you, and um, yeah, get ready to upload this. A long-awaited full barter video in Black Desert Online is finally online. <laughs> Go get yourself a Karak. See you in the sea.